Okay, so welcome everyone. My name is Sharon Shelton, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Intrinsic. And I'm joined by Tim Nicholson, who's the Vice President of Informer Services and Support. We really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your day to join us for this brief webinar. And our intention is to demonstrate the Discover feature of our um, Informer Data Discovery and Analytics platform. Um, but first, a little housekeeping. The session is being recorded and will be available on our website within about 24 to 48 hours. Um, we have quite a few people on the webinar, so lines are muted to cut down on background noise. However, if you have any questions as we go, um, feel free to uh, let us know. Um, type in your questions during the Q&A portion of the webinar and we'll be sure to get to them at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. So for those unfamiliar with Intrinsic, we've been in the software business for over 30 years developing reporting and data analysis solutions for several industries, specifically higher education. We have a very large footprint in higher education, insurance, manufacturing and distribution, and many others actually through, also through our network of over 20 partners. Informer was introduced back in 2001, um, so it's a very mature product, and version five was released back in August of 2017, so a few months ago. There are about 1,500 organizations using Informer worldwide. And again, as I mentioned, we have 20 partners who are either reselling Informer alongside their industry-specific ERP or who have embedded Informer within their platform. We are consistently rated highly amongst our customers on independent review sites like Captera, TrustRadius, um, and, and we're particularly proud of that. We're rated highly for um, ease of use, for self-service capabilities, competitiveness, among other things. So that's us. So data seems to be on everybody's mind these days. Um, there are new software tools. It seems like they're coming out every few months. There are tons of blogs and commentary, discussion boards, all talking about how organizations are using data, whether it's big data or cloud data, or unstructured data, structured data, now censored data, AI and machine learning is, is, is all the rage now. Um, I read somewhere not too long ago this incredible stat that there something like 40 zettabytes of data are expected to be created by 2020. And I didn't even know what a zettabyte was, so I had to Google it. And a zettabyte is a trillion gigabytes. So that's 40 trillion gigabytes of data are expected to be created by 2020. So that's a lot of data. And this data is pouring in from many disparate sources. So for organizations like yours that are collecting all this data, it's often stored in all these multiple unrelated software applications and databases. And it's becoming more and more critical, as you know, to, to find efficient ways um, uncomplicated ways to turn this data into usable information in order to stay competitive. Um, spreadsheets and um, kind of canned ERP reports are still widely used, but often with those, there's little room um, to, to really explore questions that aren't really answered. Those are typically static reports that you have to go back to IT to get any modifications done. So as a result, a lot of significant data points are often buried. Um, and there's a lack of context for folks to interpret the data. And in addition to that, the data is often not real time. So as soon as the spreadsheet is shared, that the data is often outdated. So oftentimes people are making decisions based on stale data. So traditional reporting is good, you know, for knowing exact values, right? But it's not necessarily ideal for communicating the real value of those numbers. The data is just the raw facts and the stats, but having the data isn't enough. It must really be presented within a context that gives the data meaning and relevance and the ability to iterate on the fly to answer questions. Because one question will, might generate another question. And one of the best ways to do that is by analyzing the data visually. 
So using charts and graphs to visualize this large amount of data is often easier than kind of pouring through spreadsheets and static reports. And visualization is really a really uh, cool, efficient way to, to convey a story, to share a story, and then kind of experiment with different scenarios. If I change this parameter, what happens to the data, to the, um, the result? If I, if I tweak it this way, what happens to the result? Um, and it's a quick and easy way to convey concepts in a universal way. Um, so that, in a, and by universal, I mean you can kind of minimize misinterpretation because everyone's looking at the same picture. So what's the, why is data visualization so important? Um, and some of this is obvious, but, but maybe not. Um, it, it gets you fast answers to critical questions. So you can identify areas that need attention, uh, areas that might need improvement. Um, you can identify emerging trends. Um, for example, you can clarify what factors might influence customer behavior or if you're a, a, a university student behavior. Um, you can uncover relationships and patterns. You, know, you can communicate a story to others. Um, you, it, it'll, it helps you understand how to market your products or how to market your classes if you're a university and when to, when to have them, where, where to market your products. It helps you to dig into more, uh, dig into the data for more insights to help you make better decisions. Um, this is where the iterative uh, value of data visualization comes in. You can predict sales volumes and revenue. Um, it promotes creative data exploration across the organization. And you can uncover opportunities and uncover risks. And there's lots of different types of visualization. There's number charts. Um, those are just kind of, um, it's like a ticker, which gives you an immediate update of a particular KPI. You have line charts, which kind of show trends or uh, relationships over time. There's maps where you can visualize your, your, your data geographically. Um, bar charts um, where you can kind of comparatively rank data. Um, column graphs, which are more for like chronological data, for example, um, growth over specific periods of time or for comparing data across categories. Then there's your pie charts that I think I used when I was in college, um, which kind of demonstrate the proportional composition of a variable, um, but over kind of like a static time frame. Then there's the gauges that display single values and they're based on a particular target. Um, um, and, and it tells you how off or on you are on target, how off target or on target you are. Then there's scatter plots, which are really best for um, kind of correlations. And then the typical tables, which kind of just easily display kind of the underlying data that make up the visuals. And then there's area charts that are kind of like line charts, but they're more like a time series um, relationship. So these are just some more of the common ones. There's tons of other ones um, available, but the bottom line is there are lots of visualizations. So, so as we think about visualizing data, Right, we need to identify what we want to know, like what metrics we need to track. So maybe, for example, we start with the most important metric of your company or your department. So as an example, let's just say your metric is net income, and that's usually a juicy metric. So after you determine a key metric, then you figure out what the underlying metrics are. So for, in other words, what factors influence net income? So for simplicity, for example, net income is typically influenced by sales, revenues, and costs, like marketing, for example. So then you could ask what factors influence these metrics? For example, sales might be influenced by the number of leads your organization gets, how many proposals you send, your, your close ratio on those proposals, your average sale price, and, and so on. So, so it's, it's, when you're thinking about visualizing the data, you want to ask what KPIs do you want to show? Who's the audience? Is it an executive or is it somebody on the plant floor? Is it somebody, a salesperson out in the field? And how will the data be consumed? What charts and graphs, given that, might be most relevant and meaningful? Right, so, so visualizations are a beautiful way to help you make sense of the data, but it's not always easy to know which one is best to use, right? 
And, and so the question becomes, how can the technology help you with that? So once you have an idea of what you want to track, um, how can the technology be an enabler? And maybe it can automatically suggest visuals for you, get you started based on um, the fields that you've selected for analysis. Maybe it can enable self-service interactivity. Um, so that, especially for folks who don't have um, a significant technical background, it would be awesome for the technology to be able to allow non-technical folks to iterate on these visuals, to change the parameters and see what happens, to ask questions on the fly. Um, it should incorporate up-to-date information so that um, decisions are based on the best information uh, available, not week-old information, month-old information, or even six-month-old information. And it should allow drill down into the visuals for detail to, to provide as much context as available uh, for decision making. So these are just some ways that technology can help. So our developers had this in mind um, when they designed Informer's Discover feature um, with this intelligent visualization suggestion capability. It's all designed to kind of just do that, what I just talked about, to kind of get you started and then allow you to iterate um, from there on your own, allow you to, to pivot or sort or filter. Um, the Discover feature auto-generates visualizations for you, again, based on the fields that you've selected. It allows you to interact dynamically with these visuals. Again, pivoting, sorting, filtering, all kinds of cool stuff. You can create additional charts and graphs and maps and even custom visuals that might not come packaged with Informer. Um, you can easily create custom visuals. Um, you have the ability to create comparison boards where you can kind of compare over uh, specific time frames um, on one screen. And you can also create personalized dashboards so you can create dashboards with visuals that are relevant to you. And those visuals can be updated um, in real time with the data that's most relevant. So instead of me going on and on about Discover, um, we'll do a really brief demo um, so you can kind of see how it works. Um, and then if there are any questions at the end, um, we'll be happy to answer them. So I'm going to turn this over to Tim. Okay, well, welcome folks. Uh, thank you again for uh, taking the time to take a look at our Discover tool and the Informer product. As Sharon mentioned, uh, the, the product allows you to uh, work with data. We really don't care where the data is coming from uh, as far as what application you're using, ERP system, CRM system, whatever. Uh, as long as you can get to the data and get it into Informer, it, uh, we can connect to it and and uh, be able to do this kind of stuff uh, that we're about to show you with that data. Uh, so what I'm showing you here, because we're limited on time, uh, I've already pre-built out a data set that we're going to work with. So a data set, just so you'll uh, get an idea of the, the terminology while we're talking about here. A data set is just an extraction of the relevant information, the relevant data that I need about a particular you know, population of data or uh, segment of the, of, of the data that I'm working with. So in this case, I'm showing uh, applications to an institution. This could very easily be sales orders, or this could very easily be uh, you know, manufacturing uh, work orders or financial data or whatever. Um, but uh, so we, we have created this data set here to pull in all sorts of relevant information about uh, students or, or individuals who are interested in coming to my institution. And so I want to be able to create some, some visuals so I can kind of monitor what's going on. You know, the idea is I, I want to increase my applications coming in. I want to be able to uh, make sure that as the applications are coming in that I'm processing them timely and that I'm getting them enrolled in the classes that they need and so forth. So I want to be able to monitor that process very closely. And so we can use Informer to do that with this data. A couple of things we can do here very easily uh, is just, uh, as Sharon mentioned, we can create pivot tables. So I can very easily go in and start selecting uh, 
different components of our data. So I might want to look at you know start terms versus uh, the applied programs that they're coming into. So I'm going to break out of the the count of the applications I'm getting in each of these areas here, just to see how I'm doing. Uh, then you can add you know, different values here uh, if you wanted to take a look at that uh, information. Change it from count to say a total of something. So uh, you know, if this were sales, I might be doing a total sales amount here, or something other than than a count of of this uh, of the values. Uh, you know, the pivot tables are very easily worked with. You can interact with them. You can drill in and see the actual data behind the that component. You can add multiple columns here. So I'm going to change this from applied program, and maybe I want to look at the applied date and on the uh, say the the year. Uh, so again, very easily how you can create you know a pivot table there. But what we really want to look at is the Discover tool itself. So Discover. Uh, allows you to get in and create much more interesting visuals. Obviously, you know, pivot tables are, are useful, but uh, we want to be able to quickly visualize our data and see what's going on uh, with, with our data. So one of the difficult things uh, a lot of people find when working with, with visualization tools is what what kind of visual do I want to create? I know I want to look at this component of data, but I don't necessarily know what kind of visual. Uh, that I want to create. So that's where the auto suggest about uh, suggestion comes in for what kind of visual you might want to start with and then you can very easily change that. So for example if I want to analyze the incoming applications by gender so I can make sure I'm having you know a good uh, a good diversity of, of uh, gender across my applications coming in. Then I can just select the gender column here and you see that Informer has created a couple of visuals for me that it thinks might be useful for me. And I can very easily manipulate these visuals if I, I don't like the, the bar chart, for example, maybe I want to change that to a pie chart so I can get a better distribution view here of, of my, my gender breakout. Uh, so I can uh, create that very easily just by changing the chart type and then this is a useful chart that I want to reuse later I can just click on my save visual there and it's going to save that chart then here under my visuals area that I can reuse later um, then if I uh, I can do more detail type charts uh, so I can go in for example and look at applied program so maybe I want to look at which programs are most popular within uh, within that application pool. Maybe I'm uh, trying to boost up enrollment in a particular program. So I want to monitor that and see how I'm doing uh, within that program and a group of programs. Uh, these charts are interactive as well, just like the pivot table. So if I want to further go into the, say, the Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and I want to look at the breakout by gender there, for example, I could just select gender and drill into that and if I'm from the females and I can say let me see how we're doing as far as admission statuses are concerned uh, and so forth so I could continue to drill down into that information uh, within those charts and again if I like the chart I can save it as well and you can actually select multiple uh, Type, uh, multiple fields here if you want to uh, break it out by more than just one. For example, I might uh, select ethnicities and then within ethnicity I want to look at race. So now I'm getting this nice little breakout here and I can change that stack from uh, normal to a percentage so it gives me uh, all the way out to 100% so it breaks out the different races. Uh, I can, if I change that to a pie chart, it gives me this nice little pie chart here. I can very easily configure these charts if I want to change the way they look. So I can go in here, for example, and on the uh, series, I can uh, change the, uh, the access information around. I can come in here to the labels and say I want to show the label values in line and as, as well as the percentage values so I can see the breakout of those values within those different categories. And then again, I can save that. Uh, <clears throat> you'll also notice that it creates pivot tables over here if you're choosing um, multiple uh, uh, multiple values that you want to uh, analyze on. 
creates a nice little pivot table there. Now, Informer is also sensitive as far as the type of data that you uh, choose from. You'll notice how the uh, the columns are broken out into different categories or different types of values. So, for example, if I wanted to analyze the average um, uh, admission test score, uh, for example, I can simply select the admission test uh, field here in the text, so it gives me all of my admissions tests, and then in my uh, under my value here, under my decimal values, I can select admission test score. Now it gives me the total, and then I can go in and easily change that chart to be the average of the test scores instead. So it gives me an idea of how my incoming uh, applications are doing average-wise on their scores, their application scores, or test scores, excuse me. Um, we can, if we select a date field, for example, I can uh, do a trend analysis here. So we can, unfortunately, my data is kind of skewed with the dates a little bit, but uh, if I'm looking at date applied, so maybe I want to look at the applications coming in month over month, uh, I can change that interval to say month of year. And let's change that to be, oops, uh, wrong thing. Change that to be an area spline. So that gives me a nice little breakout of month over month. So I can see uh, here in October, I got this nice little spike in enrollment uh, or in uh, applications. Maybe I did a college fair uh, at the high, local high schools back in September. So I can very easily see, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely gaining some uh, additional applications and increasing my applications that are coming in. Uh, we can break that out. So if I wanted to, for example, break it out by gender, then we can you know, see that value there. Um, so we can trend data over time very easily. And we can also, if we have uh, geo values in our data, for example, uh, the state, if I choose that state field, Informer sees the word state in the name and says, okay, I'm, I'm gonna map this information out. So it gives me a nice little breakout of the uh, applications by state. And again, I'm able to drill into that and either uh, pivot on that or I can view a, another a heat map of that information. Um, and if, it's, if you choose country, you'll get one of the world and so forth. The, uh, you'll notice there's another field on here called location. If I choose that, this allows us to tie into, uh, based on a geographical location value, that we have here in our uh, data set uh, that is the latitude and longitude uh, value is, which is derived from the zip code, uh, we can very easily create a nice Google map now of that information. And I wanna make that bigger. There we go, that's nice and big. Uh, a little bit bigger than I wanted, but that'll work too. Uh, we can change the uh, mark uh, type to marker and be able to see that um, map now we can see the distribution across the country of where my applications are coming from so maybe if i'm looking at a particular area that uh you know i'm constantly sending a recruiter to and we're just not getting any applications from there uh you know is it worthwhile to send that recruiter uh any longer to that that area uh or do we need to maybe look at a different recruiter or you know what's going on there why are we not getting applications from that area uh, so you can create those quick visuals that way. So again, those are just some examples of the, the types of visuals you can create and how easy it is to create those with just a few clicks of the mouse. So you're, and then you're able to, as, as uh, Sharon mentioned earlier, you can combine those uh, into uh, you know, all those different visuals onto a dashboard or a comparison board, and then allow the users to access those visuals that way and interact with them just like we were doing uh, here in Discover. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll wrap the, the demo part up and I'll pitch it back over to Sharon. Alrighty, let's see. Did you turn it over to me yet, Tim? You can uh, go back and share your screen again if you want you to uh, All right, select great. the share screen and then take it back. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so so we again we appreciate your time. We're a little bit over, and apologize for that. There were let me check and see if any questions came through. I see 
Okay, how many data sources can you access? Uh, you can access as many data sources as you want. Uh, your your visuals can be uh, built off of, uh, your visuals are typically built off of a single data source, or a data set, excuse me. Uh, you can have multiple visuals created from multiple data sets, but the beauty about the data set is you can pull data from multiple data sources into that data set and be able to visualize that information uh, from that data set. So in essence, your, your visuals can incorporate as many sources of data as, as, uh, as you need. Awesome, awesome. Uh, another question uh, mentioned creating a custom visual, how to do that? It's actually relatively easy uh, through our extensibility uh, capabilities of Informer. Uh, we can, uh, we are, or the customer can create a, a plugin that adds those uh, custom visuals uh, very very quickly and easily uh, to the uh, to the list that are available there. Uh, we had one that uh, involved tracking ticket sales at athletic events, so we created a, a map of a football stadium and were able to visualize the the ticket sales uh, by seating uh, within that, that stadium map. So that's just an example of one that we can do, but the, the possibility is really limitless there. Okay, great. And then we have one more question that came through. How to share, is, can visuals be shared? Yes, they can be shared. Uh, you don't have to necessarily log into Informer to be able to access these visuals. Uh, you can very easily uh, share individual visuals as, as static images that are rendered real time off of the data uh, that's in the data set, or you can uh, incorporate uh, multiple visuals into a dashboard and then share that dashboard out to other users, uh, then, then they can access that, and that is interactive, so they have the drill down capability and all of that within the dashboard itself. Uh, you can also embed those within existing pages. Uh, so you have a portal or a web page, you can embed those dashboards and visuals there as well. Okay, great. Okay, so again, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. If there are any additional questions or questions that we did not get to, feel free to reach out to us at informersales at intrinsic.com, or you can reach out to me personally at Sharon at intrinsic.com. If you'd like to schedule a personalized demo, or we do have a sandbox where you can actually get into a, a, a version of Informer and play around to kind of get a, a sense of how the interface works. Um, in order to get details about that, again, you can contact us. Um, there's more information on our website. The information is there. But again, I appreciate your time. And again, reach out to us if there's any questions. The recording will be up on the website within a day or so. And we appreciate your time. Thank you.